I don't wear a scent to attract. I wear a scent to just be. Hi, I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition, where we talk about all things fragrance, whether it be niche, designer, or celebrity. If you are a new subscriber, you've clicked on to Fabulosity. I'm Gabby, so don't forget to hit that button, hit that notification bell, and you'll receive all the notifications. So today we are talking about a fragrance that, well, what can I say about this fragrance? It's stolen my heart, but it's an enigmatic, powerful fragrance, none other than Salome herself. And this fragrance, what can I say about this fragrance? Let's just say that this fragrance isn't for the wallflowers amongst you. This fragrance is for those that want to make a presence and want to be who they are. This fragrance is what, who I am. I cannot say it any other way. This fragrance is just, it's beautiful, but in a different way. So here is the box. Here is the presentation of the box. This is Salome by Papillon Artisan Perfumery. And I had to have the full size because after sampling, be in my collection. Take it out of the box. Just a nice box here, which I'm keeping. I'm keeping this box. And it has the notes on the back. And this, and this is the bottle of pure seduction. Yes, you heard it. This is a 50 ml bottle. It's beautiful, it's just classic. A lovely, lovely stopper. Now I have already worn this. <sighs> this fragrance, which is so different to the previous fragrance that I reviewed, it is alluring, it is captivating but let's go through the notes. According to Fragrantica, the notes are very different, but I'll just read through what it says. Bitter orange and bergamot, which you can, what well, I can smell the citruses from it when you do spray it. And it is that orange. I do smell a little bit of orange in there. Whether it has, I don't know, but it has that citric effect. It has, in the heart, jasmine, carnation, tobacco, Turkish rose, and orange blossom. Not sure about orange blossom, but there we go. Then in the base, you have castoreum, cumin, oak moss, styrax, hay, patchouli, birch, and vanilla. A lot of notes going on there. On the back of the box, it says you have jasmine, Turkish rose, Africa stone, which I'm assuming is maybe the animalics, carnation and musks, which must be an animalic scent from the musk. Now, this fragrance, boy. Gosh, this fragrance. 
I have to say it probably is the most how can I say it this fragrance is probably the best fragrance I have ever come across to date yes to date now that is quite a sweeping statement but it it is I cannot be dishonest I have to be honest it's just I have to spray this now this fragrance opens with that orange but it soon dissipates and you get jasmine and by the jasmine it's not a a jasmine which is in many other scents because it's combined with those animalics and it's combined with those musks the rose the turkish rose you do pick up on now the jasmine and the rose, it is so indolic, it is so narcotic, it it draws you, it, it draws you in. This fragrance, which is completely different to all of the other fragrances that I've sampled in her range, this is completely off the scale. This fragrance, well, I keep saying this fragrance because it is it is such a dirty jasmine that's the only way i can describe it combined with the carnation which gives it some spiciness the carnation adds some spice to it and i'm not sure if it does have tobacco in but it may well do because liz the perfumer liz moores she blends it oh, it is just it's the shit that's the only way I can describe it it's the shit it's the bomb the longevity of this fragrance is completely a long time lingers and lingers and lingers I've worn this to bed and I still can smell it on myself in the morning it's just pure magic it's bewitching it's beguiling it's absolutely breathtaking and it is not for everybody this fragrance this fragrance this perfume is what angelique is what i aspire to be salome is probably who i am and i'm going to equate this perfume to an actress who has inspired me, who has helped me on my journey to be who I am, believe it or not, because growing up in the 1980s, this woman in the 70s and 80s, this woman embodies this fragrance and imagine, if you will, from the film, The Stud, in the late 1970s, going into the early 80s, when it was at the disco era, and you imagine Joan Collins, yes, Joan Collins, you imagine her in this full length fur coat, sitting in her Rolls Royce, because let's face it, that's what she has. And her lover, who is easily 10, 15 years younger than her, because that's who she is, gets in her car and she is there, erotic, sensual, sexual, animalic, 
unbuttoning that fur coat. And with each unbutton, the sexual tension just mounts in the air. And the driver is just glancing, but does not want to glance, while they entwine. And this is in the air of that car. It envelops, it envelops everywhere. That dirty jasmine, that Turkish rose, those animalic notes, that musk. It teeters on it's almost to the point where it's wrong. The smell, the odour, but it brings you back in with that Turkish rose and jasmine and it pulls you back in. So when you sometimes wear it, it's not bothering, but it's present and it's there and it's almost body odour but it is so beautiful that that doesn't sound right I know but it is it's those musks and those animalics Liz Morse when she did this perfume I know in a video interview she did which I will link down below she spoke about her family saying that they thought she had lost the plot completely making this she was inspired by Salome, but she was also inspired by a vintage 1920s Art Deco era of a woman, a voluptuous woman, carnal. And this was born, Joan Collins. She is that Lady Fontaine. She is that woman who not only spends money, she makes money and she's her own. She's spoilt. She's spoilt to the point where she's this married woman. She takes a young lover and then she just discards him. And he is disgruntled, but she moves on. And that's Lady Fontaine. Salome and I have to say masterpiece she did she created a masterpiece Liz Moores did I also think of Joan Collins in the film The Land of the Pharaohs because I imagine her wearing this it is biblical I just imagine her again that queen of the Nile, just wearing this fragrance. And in that film, she has her demise. She is buried alive in the tombs. But ultimately, Salome is my scent. And I will say, I actually wore this in the workplace one day. Yes, I wore this in the workplace and somebody actually said to me, oh, you smell so rich. Thank you, next. So Salome wins my heart. Not only is it erotic and sensual, it is a little bit playful. It's daring, it's adventurous, it's bold and audacious. So, what are your thoughts on Salome? I'd like to hear them down below. Is it a fragrance you've tried? Is it a fragrance that you're scared to try? Because you can sample like I did. And afterwards, I was not scared at all. But is it a fragrance that you don't like maybe? That's absolutely fine. But for me, Salome, Lady Fontaine awaits. 
So until next time, you've been watching another edition of The Fragrantition. But as the song goes, be young, be foolish, but be happy. Ciao for now. <laughs>